Good afternoon and welcome. From right outside of Washington, D.C. at the Consumer Electronics Association headquarters in Arlington, Virginia, I'm Kelsey Palmer with CEA and today we're going to be talking about how 3D printing technology is changing our world. Joining us today is Derek Campana, the president of Animal OrthoCare, a company that is using 3D printing to create custom prosthetics for animals. Welcome, Derek. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Yeah, good. So before we jump in and talk about the technology, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into this field, how you started Animal OrthoCare. Um, well, I started in the human field. I didn't even know that a veterinary field existed, and actually it didn't. So I went to Northwestern University for prosthetics and orthotics and got my degree, and a veterinarian came to our office and was in need of a prosthetic device for her own dog. And she said, no one does this. Um, so a light bulb went off in my head, and I said, oh, let's start a business. Um, so 10 years later, I have this company that's grown into a worldwide um, industry and uh, the whole veterinary field has grown tremendously over those 10 years. But um, you, know, you, ha you have to start with the human side. There's no such thing as veterinary schooling at this point. So uh, we're just kind of the pioneers, the few of us that do this in the uh, entire field. And Animal Ortho Care is, is one of the few firms in the country that, that does what you do, correct? It is a few firms in the world. Um, there's probably about six to eight of us in the world that do this. Uh, me and a company in Colorado were the first two to start. And from there, just a few companies have been added on um, just because it's a pretty difficult field to get into and maintain. But we've been able to do that. Um, and, and the industry's growing and we're getting into bigger, brighter technology as we're talking about today. Yes, definitely. So how did you first get started um, using 3D printing? Um, I was contacted by 3D Systems. They had one of their employees fostering a dog named Derby who had a congenital forelimb deformity. I actually have his body as a printed form. This is Derby's body with the forelimb deformity. Um, they contacted me and the, the employee said, oh, why can't we use 3D printing to make prosthetics for this dog? Um, no one's ever done it before, so they came to our our facility and asked us a few questions on how we could do this. Um, I initially used some of our traditional methods of casting his legs, and from there we were able to go into the freeform software, some of the technology we use for 3D manufacturing, and we were able to create the prosthetics through that. And that was kind of the initial, initial uh, 3D printing story and, and world's first uh, dog to get 3D printed prosthetics. That's awesome. So uh, did you experiment with different designs and different materials when you were working with Derby? Um, so we, our focus was to get the socket manufactured correctly. That's the most important part. So I was in charge of designing the, just the socket that his arms fit into. Um, I have a 3D printed socket right here. So Derby's arms would fit directly into these um, on both sides. And then 3D systems and I kind of helped design what you see today. This is one of his 3D printed devices right here. Um, we started with just more of a peg leg design and then we created this circular form and that seemed to work better for them. We've only used uh, certain materials with Derby um, that I know of, but 3D Systems uh, is working on using some different materials to see if they can uh, do a better job with what he has currently. Okay. So what, what is the process for a new client that was coming to you and you were going to use 3D printing to help them get a new prosthetic? What would, what would be the process that you would go through? Since it works so well with Derby, we would pretty much do the same thing. It's really hard to 3D scan a dog's leg because of their fur. Um, we could do it one of two ways. Um, we send casting kits all over the world for owners or veterinarians to take molds of the dog's leg. If they came to us, we would do the same thing. We would cast the dog's leg, make a negative mold, fill that with plaster of Paris, make a positive mold. Um, and from there, we would 3D scan that mold, put it into the system, and design around there um, to a printable form. Great. So how are you planning on using the 3D printing moving forward? How do you see that technology helping your field? Uh, it, 
the design capabilities are limitless with 3D printing and the free freeform um, software. So we love that part of it. The printing and the, the materials used, we're still working with for durability. So what we've done is we've created these hybrid designs. We'll actually take and print 3D parts like this, and then we'll vacuum form our durable plastics right over top of it uh, to get something like this. So we'll get this foot, we'll put it right onto the, the mold and then use plastics that we already have here, heat them up and then vacuum form right over the top of these. That gives us the design capabilities and the durability we're looking for, um, which is great on both sides. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. so, so are there any other 3D printing success stories you can tell us about? Any other great an animals that you've helped out throughout through um, this technology? Yeah, we have a 3D, uh, or sorry, a three-legged dog in Florida named Susie. Um, she lost one of her front legs, so we were able to 3D print one of the world's first carts. Um, you can see Susie can put her existing limb right through this hole on this side, and then this acts as the opposite limb, and they can roll around like that. So that's one of the other things we've been doing is trying to create 3D printed carts. Um, on top of that, we've just had a few cases where we've made those hybrid prosthetics, like I showed you before, um, where we take the molds that we have we have existing and that can form right over the top of these. So we get, we get cases every day. We get a lot of 3D companies that are trying to do this on their own. And the reason that they're failing is because they're trying to scan the dog's leg. Um, so it's really important to get a positive mold at first and then 3D scan from there. And from there, you can get a lot of uh, success stories. Do you do you have human clients that that request for you to use three D printing technology? Do they are human clients that are bringing their their furry friends to you? <laughs> do, do you have clients that request you to use that? They do. Since Derby, we've had a influx of a lot of similar cases, and they're asking for that. Since we worked out a lot of the issues with Derby we're able to manufacture these better 3D printed hybrid uh, prosthetics and uh, we're getting good results with that. On another note, um, we're trying to get rid of the whole casting process. So what we can do is we can actually take an MRI, say from Australia, and they this is a 3D printed dog on an MRI table. So they could actually um, take an MRI and send us the file and we'll get a good positive mold and we can design right off of that MRI instead of having to ship a casting kit, have them send that cast back and work from there. This will save a lot of time and money um, and just logistically speaking, be able to do a lot more. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you don't only have dogs as clients. You have a lot of other different <laughs> animals as well. I know that um, you helped a donkey um, and I yes. think a couple of other bigger animals, do you see 3D printing technology helping, um, you know, animals outside of our domestic pets? Yes, uh, I've done from donkey, to goat, I just got back from Thailand, I saw a couple elephants, I casted their legs, they stepped on landmines and were in the process of manufacturing um, some prosthetics for two of them, or two, two elephants there, and I'm going back to uh, Sri Lanka at the end of the year to see two more elephants. Um, again, we can use the 3D uh, software, the, the free form to help make a really nice design um, and then build off of that design to make those hybrid prosthetics. So any size, small or large, we can really use 3D technology um, to design all these things and then use parts to manufacture right over the top of. I think the best, uh, the best um, instance we can use 3D technology is for the really small cases. I can't cast, say, uh, a duck's leg, so I can't get a good positive mold. So you can scan that and then 3D print the entire leg off of that. These really small cases I'm getting called for, um, that's one that's a really good instance to use 3D technology. Have you gotten requests to, for prosthetics for ducks? Yes, they actually made one, I believe, in Australia. So there's already a pre-made form for the duck's leg. So I was contacted to do a duck and we can literally just change the socket design. Everything else is 
is made so we can go um, take that pre-made design and use that for any duck in the future. That is amazing. Yeah, it's nice. We don't have to go back and redesign it. It's already there and we can just change the shape of the, uh, the socket. That is, that is truly amazing. So what, what is Animal Ortho Care's plans for the future? What, what's next for you guys? Um, we're starting another company uh, that should be launching by the end of the year to do some off the shelf um, manufacturing. So what we're doing is we're actually scanning. We have thousands of molds in our warehouse in the back and we can take, uh, we can scan all those positive molds and work them out by breed, size, shape, and then um, we can get all these pre-made parts, which will work and get a nice database for any dog that needs uh, a brace or a prosthesis in the future. So we can we can make kind of like the world's best uh, off-the-shelf products from there. That that truly is amazing. I know that that will help a lot of animals in yeah, the we future. Hope so. Yes. <laughs> so what what are the what are some of the challenges that you encountered when you were making the legs for for Derby? Were there anything was there anything that you tried? I know that you mentioned you tried a, like a peg style leg and that didn't work. Is there anything else that you tried and figured out didn't really work and you had to go back to the drawing board? Yeah, the design and the durability. So the design didn't work and every dog we have to have a different design for. You know, you don't know how they're going to react to this. So you know, Derby tried the peg leg and it just wasn't working for him. So then we had to redesign the round shape that we did. That might not work with another dog. So we're always trying new things for the design. As far as the durability, um, the plastics we were using were breaking down rather quickly. So there's a couple different printers that give a much harder plastic like you see on this cart. And, and those plastics are much more durable and hold up better. And from there, we're actually making some new prototypes where we'll have a spring um, underneath the circular design. So we're actually gonna add a second layer with a spring to it. Um, and that'll make sure that all these plastics on the, the structure hold up and, and last a lot longer. So every dog's gonna have a different design. Um, structural integrity is always an issue. So we're just trying to work out all those kinks. Since, since Derby was the first one, um, we're just trying to uh, implement and manufacture a little bit differently to make sure that each dog has what they need and is dur durable enough to last at least their lifetime. Okay. So is, is Derby's journey with his 3D printing prosthetics, is it complete? Are his legs fully mm -hmm. functioning for him now? Are there any improvements that have to be made? Um, yeah, we're, we're trying to make the design higher so he can lift his forelimbs. Uh, he, he still has a big slope in his back. Um, not every dog you have to weigh how much they can take as far as height. It's like putting someone at somebody on stilts. You don't know how high they can go before they, they fall over. So we might not be able to get as high as, um, as, as level as we want to, but the higher, the better to save his back in the future. So we're just trying to increase the height, make it more comfortable for Derby so he can last longer on the prosthetics daily. And uh, from there, uh, just, just improve on, height and design just so he can be more stable. So it's a continual process throughout the lifetime. Every prosthetic patient is a lifetime patient. That's great. So there, there is a video, a really great video of Derby that we do have posted um, on our CEA blog that you can check out at ce.org slash blog. Um, it's definitely a tearjerker. It, it got to me, um, but Derek is featured in that video as well. So I just wanted to ask, how, how was that experience making that video? Just the, the entire experience of, of working with Derby and clearly making such a big difference in that dog's life, watching it made myself as a dog lover very happy. And so I was just wondering what that experience was like for you. It was great. It was one of our uh, biggest successes, actually. Um, I'm, I was actually pessimistic. I wasn't very optimistic that he was going to walk so well. And we did a lot of filming here. And, you know, I, I like to give uh, the client's owners, you know, a true you know, kind of percentage on, of success, what I think is going to happen. And I, I was giving it more like a 30, 40 percent success rate because that's all I've seen with the use of the 3D printing and the prosthetics that were created. Obviously, it went through the roof and he, you saw how he walked and he, he could run on these things. So honestly, the first time I ever saw him run and walk was on that video. Again, just like you, I, I'm not a crier, but I was crying in the office. Uh, 
and I was seeing so many people, uh, you know, email us and, and tell us how good of a job we did. And it's just one of those moments in uh, uh, an owner's, um, a company owner's life where you, you really think you, like you made a difference. I, I agree. It was incredibly touching. I have to say I watched the video many times yeah. and it brought me to tears pretty much every time. Yeah, me too, for sure. <laughs> So is there anything else that, that you'd like to discuss about 3D printing in your field? Any any other advancements that you're looking forward to? Uh, mostly I'm looking forward to the advancements just in the materials. Um, we're happy to do these hybrid designs for now, but we would love to just have these devices printed out and to use forever. I think maybe it's not so much the material, but the design. So like I said, we're still working out all those kinks um, hopefully in the future, either the materials will, will change slightly, um, or the design, our, our brains will change slightly so we can design it a little bit better. Um, I know they can print with almost anything right now. Uh, the thing that we're looking forward to is being able to adjust the materials, be able to heat flare, things like that. So a client comes in or we print out a device and we're able to adjust it a little bit better than we are now. We can't necessarily heat up all these plastics that are printed. So I think really close in the future, we'll be able to do that. Great. So I think we're just about running out of time for today. Is there anything else that um, that you want to say about the 3D printing technology or what you guys do at Animal OrthoCare? Sure. I mean, we're doing this for dogs and animals around the world, and we just really want to raise awareness, not only for the 3D printing, but for the field in general. Not a lot of people know that a field of veterinary orthotics and prosthetics exists and just getting the world word out there knowing that there are devices that can help your pet is is a, is a big thing on top of that having the technology of 3d printing is just a, is just a bonus and we're hoping it'll make things easier and cheaper they can, the animals and their pets can get the care that they need well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was fascinating. Um, we love hearing about how 3D printing and other technology is really making a difference in people's lives and the animals that we love, um, our best friends that we have at home. We love hearing about how technology can help them as well. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. You can learn more about 3D printing and the other technology that is changing the world at cesweb.org slash change the world. Be on the lookout for our next Google Hangout on te how technology is making our world a better place. I'm Kelsey Palmer for CEA, and thank you for tuning in.